Hi everyone, Luca from lucasbearphotography.com and in this video I'm going to give you my review of the Fuji 16-55mm. Now this has been one of the most requested reviews from uh, subscribers, viewers and people that have known that I got that lens. And I think the, a lot of reasons why people are asking for these reviews is because when you look at the 18 to 55, well on paper, we kind of struggle to understand why you would want to go for that when you have this which is so cheap. So in that review I will also give you some comparison on shots uh, at different apertures and give you my thought on the two lenses. Now I use these two lenses for very different reasons. I use the 16 to 55 only for wedding, for nothing else. I don't take it out for personal stuff, I don't use it for uh, family photo shoot or anything. It's purely wedding and documentary style, so when I need to yeah, do a reportage or something like that. The uh, 18 to 55 on the other hand is um, a lens which I use a bit more, I use for all my personal stuff, you know, and also for my underwater shot and surfing shots uh, because it's the only lens that fits in my uh, housing, so I use it for that. But today I really wanted to give you my review of the on the 16 to 55 and the first thing you realize when you get it, it's huge, you know, and when you fit it on the Fuji X-T1, you know, if you don't have a grip on it, I would say that it feels quite unbalanced and look a bit funny. Uh, it just doesn't look like it was meant for this body. But when you put a grip on, it's not too bad. You actually get a good, a good balance. Without the grip, if the, the camera feels very unbalanced. When it comes to the construction, this lens is pretty much like any other Fuji lens. It's made of metal, there is rubber on the ring, and it's really, really well constructed. Uh, beautiful lens, really, really nice. Uh, the wood is plastic and you have a nice and strong uh, cap, which is not like the other Fuji lens, which has the middle one like that, which is quite slim. This one has the same cap as the 70, the 50 to 140 millimeter. Strong, thick, and fits very well on top of your camera. Um, now, if you compare this lens to, for example, Nikon or Canon 24-70, this lens actually go up and down, so it does extend. Uh, in my opinion, it's a bit of a pain. Um, I don't like it because it, it kind of, especially if you, if you move a lot, it will just go down alone. It's, uh, it's not that strong, you know, it, it will go down alone. But uh, at the end of the day, it's not, it's not so much of a difficulty. The focus ring is small at the end and that is metal and you have the rubber, uh, a little larger rubber ring for the zoom. Now, 16 to 55 is about the equivalent of 24 to 85, which makes it a very, very good and polyvalent lens because when you look at from 24 to 70 uh, on the Nikon or Canon size, 70, in my opinion, was a bit short, and that's why my 24 to 70 was only a backup. I've never really liked that lens, as this lens is one of my most used lens at weddings now. Uh, it's incredible. At 55, you can really get beautiful portrait with a nice background, nice bokeh. Uh, obviously, having a constant f2.8 helps. Uh, it's a crop sensor, so you won't obviously get as uh, buttery bokeh as you will get on a full frame, but the, the difference is kind of, it's, it's small, you know, you don't really realize it. And bottom line, and I don't think your client care uh, how buttery is the background. So, um, the, what, what can I say? I mean, it, it's an excellent lens. Uh, it's sharp from 2.8 up to 22. Uh, I use it quite wide open. I probably use it between 2.8 and 5.6, depending on the, on the situation, mostly at 2.8. Uh, I use a 16 to 55, 16 gives you a nice wide angle, 55 gives you a nice portrait uh, focal length. Uh, so it's a really polyvalent lens and I do recommend this lens for any kind of work. You know, you can use it for landscape, for maybe architectural is a bit, a bit tight, but uh, for anything which is like reportage, documentary, weddings, uh, it's an amazing lens. 
So what we'll do is uh, at the end of this video, I will show you a few examples that of the shots I've taken with it. Uh, and uh, yeah, in my opinion, I, I really like it. Now, one of the big questions that a lot of people are asking is, you know, why would you want to spend, I think it's 1,300, when you can have this one for about 3, 350. Um, there is a lot of differences between these two lenses. Uh, the first one is obviously the size. Now, one of the reasons why I don't use that lens for my personal um, photos is because it's too big. On my XT1, it just feels uncomfortable. It doesn't feel right, you know. It, it's just heavy and it's just not practical, really. It's a, it's a working horse, pretty much. That's what I would call it. But when it comes to my personal style, personal photos, you know, I want something light, easy. And I used to use the, the X-T1 with the 23 or maybe the 56. But now I use the, the 18 to 55 mostly. And I love it. It's obviously very, very small compared to the 16 to 55. It's much, much cheaper. You could probably get three, three of them for the price of one of them. It does have OIS, which is the uh, vibration reduction, which works pretty well, as this one doesn't. Um, so there is a lot of good points. You can actually take a shot at f2.8 when you are at 18 mm. As you uh, increase your focal length, your aperture will move to 4, f4. So you won't get, uh, for example, a, a nice... Um, portrait as nice as is this one at 55 because you will see you will get a smaller aperture but the bottom line is that this lens has a lot lot to offer compared to this one and for a lot of situation now the reason I got this one I actually replaced this one and I rebought it uh, that was mainly for my uh, surfing photographs but I got this one because it is weather resistant so Again, at a wedding, you know, you can control the weather and you can just shoot another day. If it's raining, you just have to shoot and that will help me as this one is no weather resistant. Going and risk a lens at a wedding, I don't know. Focusing, the focusing of that lens is much faster than this one. Uh, it grips really quickly at all aperture, all uh, focal length. Um, it is a bit better when it comes to the quality and I will show you some examples side to side of these two lenses. Uh, but the bottom line is these two lenses are for different people, I would say. If you are a professional and you need <coughs> a lens which can give you the best quality possible, uh, something which is weather resistant, um, something which is a constant aperture like 2.8, obviously this is your best bet. You know, this is a working horse. It's a professional lens for wedding photographer, I would say, in my opinion, or any other lens. I've done some commercial shots with it. Um, you can pretty much do anything with that lens. With that lens, you're going to be a bit limited with a few things. But I think, you know, if you don't put pictures, uh, if you don't magnify a picture one to one, you will possibly struggle to find out where, which picture is actually from one of these two lenses because the 18 to 55 is also excellent. Right, okay, so what I've done here is I've taken a few pictures with both lenses at different apertures and I've um, posted them here. So at just to see a, a difference. So if we look at the metadata, so we've got 5 taken with the 16 to 55, I've got f11, f8, f5, 6, f4, and 2, 8. And now 18 to 55. I got 2.8, 2.8, so we can delete one of them. Yeah. So 2.8, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 11. I didn't see the point of going uh, smaller than 11, uh, but I think this should give us a good idea. So let's look at both lens. So we uh, can close that. Right, so I finally uh, managed to get both of them side by side. And so on the right here, I have my um, 16 to 55 at 17.6 uh, millimeter and at f2.8. And on the left, I have the 18 to 55 at 18 millimeter at f2.8. So my focus was about there. Okay, so we're going to focus on the center. And well, yes, you can see that this one it's much sharper uh, this one is a bit blurry 
I do recommend you switch to HD, so it allows you to um, get a better, uh, better resolution. Uh, so on the center, yes, the 16 to 55 really show a big difference here. Uh, the little grapes here look all fuzzy, as here you can really, really kind of uh, see a good, um, good details. Let's have a look in the corners. In the corners as well, uh, the 16 to 55 does is as sharp as the center, as the 18 millimeter kind of fell down a bit uh, here, and it's much much fuzzier as you go in the corner. As you can see there, the QUO here is nice and sharp. You can really distinguish even the leather from the book, as here is completely blurry. Now the pictures were all taken at ISO 400, so that's it. Okay, so. Let's have a look at the F4 now. So let me try to get it right. So let me see, on the left here I've go F4, which is the 18, and on the right, F4, okay, it's good. Right, so again, left 18 to 55, right 16 to 55. Now let's zoom again in the middle. And already you can see, a huge uh, increase in details, much nicer details at f4. So at f2.8, a bit soft, I would say may even quite soft. Uh, as f4, it start to show some really nice details. Still much be below, I mean much, you know, still below the uh, 16 to 55, which is showing uh, better details, better contrast, better colors as well, uh, much more details. And that's in the center. Let's have a look at the corners. In the corners again, uh, the 16 to 55 really, really shine off. I mean, this lens is incredible. You know, it's sharp from center to corner at all aperture. Uh, the 18 to 55 again here at f4, uh, even an f4, the corner looks really, really soft, uh, especially when you compare it to the 16 to 55. Um, so it is. Let's move on to f5.6. <coughs> okay, let me just double check, make sure I've got it right. Five, six, five, six. Okay, so let's go again in the center. So again, 16, 18 to 55 left, 16 to 55 right. Um, here we can start to see some really good improvement uh, in the center. Um, this is still loading. So when it comes, well, okay. Uh, there is a slight difference, but uh, I mean, I'm zooming in one to one here, and you know the difference is minim in the center. So the the 16 to 55, the 18 to 55 starting to uh, is starting to look a bit better. Again here in the corners, 16 to 55, well, keep being sharp like it was at f 2.8. On the on the other side, the 18 to 55, you're starting to show some improvement at f 5.6. We still not at the level of the 16 to 55, but the 18 to 55 is uh, really starting to come together. And I think at this stage from f5.6, you can really start to have some, uh, some good result. Now let's have a look in the dark here. I'm not comparing ISO here, but uh, yes, you see there, there is a big difference, you know. Um, you can see my collection of uh, Joe McNally here. Uh, yeah, th there is a, a difference. Okay, let's move on to F8. Now F8, I'm expecting the 18 to 55 to be pretty much perfect. Let's see. Okay, on the right, 16 to 55. Yeah, I mean, this lens since 2.8 has just been performing so well that it's hard to actually distinguish which aperture it is uh, if you're looking at the sharpness or the contrast. The 18 to 55 f8 is beautiful. It really shows a lot of details, really good. Let's look in a corner. We'll look in this corner and the other one after. The difference is starting to be really minim uh, from f.8, but we can still see a slight difference in sharpness. Let's take it down a bit where I could see quite a big difference here. Uh, yeah, here again, 
the 16 to 55 is really shining. 18 to 50 is slightly, slightly uh, less sharp. Uh, I'll have a quick look at F11. Now F F11, I'm actually struggling to find which one is which. I mean, looking into details, yeah, you can absolutely see that this is the 16 to 55, but um, on a on an upscale picture like that, you you won't see much difference. So, yeah, that it is for the comparison. So as you can see, you know, especially wide open, uh, this is where you're pretty much paying a big box for. Um, especially if you look in the corners, we'll go back. To, that was so. I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. F two point eight. F two point eight. So yes, ah, but it's changed. So man, now the 18 to 55 is on the right and the 16 to 55 is on the left here. And this is what you pay, you're putting your money for. Uh, obviously this difference in quality, which goes up to F8 before you starting to see an equal quality in contrast and sharpness and details. Um, and, and this is why exactly you're paying more. This is a professional lens, which can give you professional result at all aperture, all focal length, is going to provide you with a constant f2.8 you know i mean on a picture like this blown off to uh, an a4 size will you see the difference uh, maybe maybe no um I, I think the 18 to 55 is a great backup for wedding so if you're 16 to 55 break down drop break uh, stop working where you have your 18 to 55 which will be able to give you great great result but it, it doesn't equal the 16 to 55 when it comes to quality. So let me show you a few pictures which I've taken with the 16 to 55 uh, at weddings. And then I'll end up the video this way. So um, again, thanks for looking. And don't forget to subscribe. If you have any question about this lens, post them down below. But I think I've pretty much covered everything. So, but you, I may have missed something. So don't hesitate to leave uh, your comment or post a question. Thanks for watching. Cheers. See ya.